Hello, I'm John Felt. Welcome to the Midwest edition of the Weekly Water Outlook. I mentioned it'd be a quiet week, and look at this here. Areas in brown are only zero or one day of precipitation over the last seven days. Most of the Midwest is very few days over the last seven days, but you can see along the Nebraska-Iowa border where we really need some rain, there were three days, um, some parts of western Missouri two days, and that's also very needed in that area, but most of the Midwest, not much, either zero or one day, and I'm going to show um, that in a number of different graphics here. This is the past seven days observed precipitation, and what you can see here is very large part of the Midwest, uh, no rain at all over the last week. That area in light blue um, is really not all that significant. Even the green, that's only about a half inch to an inch. In this warm season of the year, that's not all that significant. So if we look at the yellow, that's where I always say the more significant rain uh, occurred. That's really along the North Dakota and South Dakota border, a very small area. Matter of fact, remember last week I said there's gonna be a lot of red on that percent of normal? Well, look at this. Look how much red there is. By far, this tells the story of last week. Well below normal rainfall from Minnesota uh, down to most of Missouri, from Kansas all the way over to Ohio, and that dark red is only 5% of normal or less. So if we look at the jet stream, this has been the story all summer long, this ridge of strong high pressure. The issue has been is whether it's to the west or over the central part of the nation. When it's over the central part of the nation, it tends to bring those hot temperatures and the very dry weather, just what we saw last week. So when you looked at that percent of normal precipitation, here's this ridge of high pressure. Well, that is certainly no surprise. So I'm going to be talking about what's going to occur with this high pressure. Now, before I do that, let's talk about the tropics. A lot of discussion on why the tropics have been so quiet. There is one system moving off of Africa that looks like it could develop. We've had a record low number of hurricanes um, in August. Actually, through August, it was zero. Um, and we'll see what happens. We're at peak season, so it could still change. But certainly right now, there's something out in the Atlantic Basin that's been inhibiting the development of tropical systems. Now, if we look at the steering flow, Right now, this area of high pressure over the middle part of the nation and the high over the Atlantic, that's going to influence where systems will move. And I've indicated here, right where the most likely track is, right in here, and it looks like it could curve around this high, be picked up by this trough of low pressure. But this high over the middle part of the nation, that's going to gradually diminish and when it does, I think that's going to give a better opportunity for any system that does develop to perhaps move into the U.S. Now, we'll have to see on that. And again, really, no one wants a hurricane, but it certainly wouldn't help to bring some tropical moisture up into the Midwest at this time. Now, here's a drought monitor. You know, if you've been listening to my briefings, you might have noticed um, probably a couple months ago, the start of summer, I've been watching precipitation patterns and sort of focused on northern Missouri, Iowa, into Minnesota. And I was sort of curious why the drought monitor really wasn't showing that. And I was wondering, well, are conditions better than I'm expect or than I'm describing? Well, actually, I think what it is, is I was sort of focusing on the precipitation, and the drought monitor focuses on the impact. And that's why that lag uh, occurred. So here you can see the impact has caught up, and it's definitely very extreme. What we have here is that area of dark um, brown, Iowa, Missouri, parts of surrounding states. That's a D2 drought or a severe drought. And just as importantly is how it's expanded. This started off as sort of a dot, and now it's really expanded very, very quickly. Another way to look at that is um, how it has changed over certain time periods. Let's look at four weeks. This brown here is a one or two class degradation. And then if we look at the three months, you can see um, how this has developed. So this is really where it's developed. So let's look at the four weeks here. What you can see here, this is where it uh, has developed in this area in brown over the last four weeks. Now with that area of high pressure, I mentioned that you get above normal temperatures. And this is the last week in August, the latest that was available. And you can see that area of much above normal temperatures, five degrees are actually nine degrees above normal or greater. So significantly above normal temperatures that rounded out the end of August. 
Okay, so let's talk about the jet stream. But first of all, I want to tell you that climatologically, certain times of the year in my briefing, you know, we're getting into the middle part of September and eventually, sooner or later, we're going to get more into fall-like weather than summer. But I don't see it yet. The uh, initial jet stream's in green, and we're going to have that ridge of high pressure. So here, are not green, blue. So let's look at this early this week. We have this ridge of high pressure. So early this week, we're going to be a continuation of those hot temperatures and dry weather. By the middle of the week, the high begins to break down and we get a trough over the east. Sound familiar? That'll bring that cooler air down into the eastern and parts of the central Midwest. And then by next week, the jet stream just sort of lifts up to the north. So let me sort of go through the sequence here. Starting out this week with hot and dry, then towards the middle part of the week till the end of the week, cooler, still not all that impressive chances of rain. And then as we get into next week with the jet lifting north, I think that's going to let temperatures rise above normal again. Probably not as hot, but none of these patterns necessarily point towards widespread rainfall. So the rainfall forecast for the next seven days, pretty much across a broad area of the middle part of the nation, dry. We do have the upper Midwest along the jet stream, some heavy rain, and that will be welcome over parts of North Dakota, northern Minnesota. But that's a very, very small area. This entire area right here, uh, most likely not of any significant rain. And from that percent of normal, I'm sure that's going to be well below normal again in next week's briefing. Now, I took a quick look at NOAA's outlook. Um, on top are temperatures, and you can see that we have a little bit of that cool dip, that uh, area in blue here, in the period the 13th to the 17th, and that's that jet's going to dip down here. But it looks like that's going to be short-lived as we get into the latter part of September, and then we have, again, above normal temperatures. That's because the jet's going to lift up to the north. Precipitation, below normal, a strong below normal trend through the middle of the month. The latter part of the month, perhaps a bit uh, mixed, but right now I'm not all that optimistic about this. My thoughts are, it looks like it's going to be fairly quiet. And that's based not just on the models, but that's based on climatology. So the takeaway, we're going to have that impact of the ridge early this week, hot and dry. Ridge will be diminishing by midweek, bringing in some cooler air. But generally, we're in a quiet pattern that will be trending warm and dry through the latter part of the month. Thanks for listening to this week's briefing. I'll be talking to you again next week.